Suppose we have the following Lagrangian. Let's go ahead and solve for the consumer's optimal bundle of x and y. The first step is to take the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x. So, the x has an exponent of 0.25, so that's going to get multiplied down in front on the coefficient of 3. I'm going to reduce the exponent on x by 1, leaving negative 0.75. I recopy the y as is with its exponent of 0.5. I look to the second term to see where there are any x's. I do see one, it has a negative 10 attached to it, but it also has a lambda attached to it. Right? If I distributed that lambda in, it'd be 500 lambda minus lambda 10x minus lambda, lambda 7.5y. I can simplify the 0.25 and the 3, multiplying them together gives me the 0.75 as the coefficient out in front. I'm now going to take the partial derivative with respect to y. So the y has a 0.5 as its exponent, so the 0.5 comes down in front, gets multiplied on the coefficient of 3. I recopy the x to the 0.25, but I take the y exponent and reduce it by 1, leaving negative 0.5. Again, if I look to see in that second term where there's a y, it's negative 7.5y, but really there's that lambda distributed on it. So when I take the derivative with respect to y, I'm left with negative 7.5 lambda. I can simplify the 0.5 times the 3, and out in front that coefficient will be 1.5. I have one more partial derivative to take, and that's with respect to lambda. 500 minus 10x minus 7.5y. Now this you recognize is the constraint. That's always going to be the case. Whenever I differentiate with respect to lambda, out will come my budget constraint. So now that I have my three partial derivatives, the next step, since I'm looking for the optimal bundle, is to set them each equal to zero. Now what I'm going to do is work with the top two equations first. And if I were writing this down on a piece of paper, immediately over to the right is where I would write these next steps. I don't have space in my slide, that's why I'm showing you this arrow. Okay, so I'm going to take the first portion, the 0.75x to the negative 0.75y to the positive 0.5, and I'm going to recopy it. I'm just putting a little note here is where I would do this if I had a piece of paper, but I don't have room on my slide. Okay. The negative 10 lambda, I'm going to add to the right-hand side where that zero is. So I've just rearranged the top equation. I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom equation. So that first term, I'm going to recopy immediately under the other term. I'm going to add that 7.5 lambda over, and then I'm going to make both of these into fractions, right? So this is all up where that little word here says. That's where I would do it on a piece of paper. Now the reason I've done this is it's going to make it easier for me to simplify these terms. For one thing, lambda is going to cancel right out, and I'm just left with my x's and y's. I can take that 0.75 and that 1.5, simplify them, that's going to be 0.5 as the coefficient out on the left hand side, and I can take that 10 and that 7.5 and it's going to simplify to 1.33. Now, the next thing to deal with is these negative exponents. I don't like them, so I want to get rid of them. So, when there is a negative exponent in the numerator, I can move it down to the denominator and it'll be positive. When there's a negative exponent in the denominator, I can move it up to the numerator to make it positive. So, performing those tasks and having my simplification, I'll get 0.5y over x equals 1.33. So all that mess with the nasty exponents, it's always going to simplify down really nicely if we start with a Cobb-Douglas functional form. I'm just going to rearrange this and solve for x. Now I have two equations and two unknowns. We'll look at solving that in the next part.